This week on Ask APT, we look at cartridge valves. So how to identify cartridge valves, what to do to set them, how to know how to set them, and where they might be used and how to install them in a system or replace them in a system. Let's have a look at this boom lift from All Fabs. Now it uses fairly exclusively cartridge valves in the main control of the hydraulic system. So you can see here there's the main manifold where all the cartridge valves are in it. We've got these solenoid valves across the front which are a cartridge valve and up top we've got a whole heap of cartridge valves and on the faces as well we've got cartridge valves. As we get closer to these valves you can see there is a part number on the valve itself. So this is the critical part in identifying what the valve is and how to get some information on it. Now that's on the side of a Sun one, and down here it's slightly different where we find the part number on top, stamped on top of the valve itself. Either way is okay, it doesn't matter where the part number is, and if we go back to the one at the top here, you can see it's got Genie stamped on it, and it's, it's actually from the OEM. They've had the, the valve itself manufactured for them with their part number on it. Sometimes this is just so that they can sell the spare parts, but sometimes this is because they've done a modification or it's a special valve to suit their particular machine. So here's another manifold, which is a part of our training kit. And again, we've got multiple valves on it, which have labels. Now on this particular one, the labels are uh, labeled so that we can refer back to the schematic and find out what the valve is, and also so we can find it in the block. But there's lots and lots and lots of valves on this particular one which are all different in their application and what they do. These two valves look exactly the same but have very very different jobs. So again what we're looking for is the labelling that's on the, on the side of the valve itself, actually down there on the valve. So here's an example of some data sheets that we've collected and we've just put into a book which matches all of our training gear. So here's the sheet for one of those valves that we we're just looking at, CBCA, and here's all the information about what that valve is and what it does. Now CBCA is quite a lot different if we turn over to a CACA. -A. So the valves are different and they do a slightly different job. It's only one letter different in the code, but makes a world of difference to the way the valve works. So it's critically important that if we're going to replace valves, we need to make sure that we find it in the data sheets and use the correct code from the schematic and from the valve that we're replacing. So here we are, we've got five cartridges in our, in our box here that are all made to go in the same cavity. Now when I say the same cavity, this is a body, a line mount body, which takes these cartridge valves. So this body will accept any one of these valves. Now the tricky thing is, is that one, two, three, all look very, very much the same, but to do very, very different jobs. And even worse in this particular case is that this valve that's in here and a valve that looks similar to it and does the same job, the adjustment can go in the opposite direction. So this one might be clockwise to increase the setting, whereas another one that looks the same goes in the same spot, but has a slightly different part number might have a different, part, different adjustment direction. So that's pretty scary when you think about getting settings right or adjustments right. So that's a quick look at cartridge valves. The important thing is, is that you identify them correctly. So the only way to identify them correctly are to look at the part number on the cartridge valve itself. And if we're lucky enough to be able to compare it with the numbers on the block, we can make sure from the schematic that we've got the right valve in the right spot. Then we have to refer to the data sheets or to the OEM part manuals to ensure that we get the right valves in the right spot, doing the right job, because it can be very, very dangerous if we get the wrong valve in and it interacts with the system in the wrong way. Hope you've enjoyed this one. Sorry it's been such a long time coming. If you've got a question, put them in the comments below. Shoot me a message or give us a call at the office. I'm happy to have a chat about it and put together something that suits you and everyone else that's thinking the same things. Mm -hmm.